waited a long time to do a video on a thousand suns and honestly i expected it to be on aramin first but i have a snack deck already and um he did a lot better than i expected him to in rank to be honest here's the deck uh you again you can do whatever you want you don't necessarily need it like this but uh snacked is very good at board control because of his ability so you're gonna want cards like i have at least one flesh change to get me psychic power so i can use his ability uh kaizu lane he's just a good legendary two void engagements because um you want this one specifically because um Synact is all about dealing damage and this can get you a good amount of damage in earlier turns. I only have one City of Light. I have one Recon only to save space in my deck, but you need both of these cards. One Enumerations. You need one of these, I think, as well as two Void Engagements for card draw because this is a very good card for card draw. Uh, this twice, obviously, in any Thousand Suns deck. This twice, too just very good especially if you're against aggro and stuff because with snacked you can't always be aggro because obviously there are warlords that are more aggro than snacked uh a moon squad uh good 4-4 four, four, and it gives you psychic powers to use your ability Anktao twice because you need to deal damage i have one max squad you don't need this card but the reason i have it is because it has a good ability if you put this in play and then put other troops in play and this manages to survive, you can get a very strong board. And especially cards that have precog, you can um, buff them and they're basically on the board to stay unless they have board, unless your enemy has board removal. But yeah, you need this card obviously in any Thousand Suns deck. It's really good for healing and psychic abilities because you generate a lot of psychic from this card and it has precog. Uh, I have one hidden one. It's too good of a card to not have in your deck, but I don't think you need two with Synact. Uh Obviously, is a card or against um, Angron and stuff like that. Two speeders because you need this flank card. Very good with Synact. Aramon's Cabal twice, obviously. Very good card. Ash and Blow twice. You only need one Ash or Warfare, I think, because um, this is just a uh, situational sort of. You don't really need it more than once in a game. I mean, maybe you do, but I don't with Snacked. I put Forge Master in because it's a very good troop, especially for six energy. And I don't have many um, troops for six energy. Oh, yeah, three. So it's worth putting in. Uh, the Horned Ryment is a very good legendary on any Thousand Suns Warlord. Uh, it saved me a lot of games, especially playing Araman, but on Snack too. And you need this in any deck, obviously. And I have Orbital Bombardment at the end. This is an odd choice. You can, you don't need this in your deck, really. But because of Synact, it's a Thousand Suns, obviously. You have Psychic Powers. So you can spend all of your energy to use this. And you can either use your Psychic Powers after you spent your energy to use your ability. Or um, use Astral Warfare to clear the board. Like, deal loads of damage to the board, then Astral Warfare to clear it. You could also um, use other damage cards like, um, what's it called? Burning a bot. Yeah, you can use that as well. But I don't. I'll show you some games. Synact did a lot better than I thought he would have ranked. Here's the battle log. I played a bunch of ranked games and I only lost twice out of all the ranked games I played. So these first two games are practice games. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was seeing if this deck is still good. But I'll start off with a ranked game first. Here we go. I've met loads of Santars. Everyone's playing him. And Snacked does surprisingly well I against Santar. It's because I guess they need troops in play to use their uh, Augmetics. And Santar, well, Snacked is a very good at getting rid of troops I always hate that card because when they use that you know hell is coming like a really big troop is about to be put in play at like 4 energy
But I like how this game uses lesser known characters. Like Synact, a lot of people wouldn't really know this character to be honest. But he's a good character in the lore. I mean, he's even in 40k. He was for a bit. Until Araman decided he didn't need him anymore. Very sad for Synact. But this is what I mean. Very good with... Um, yeah, and this as well. To get more psych psychic power and to finish that off. It's very, very useful. And... Um, Iron Hands can't really do anything because of it. Because they need troops in play to actually do anything. And you can get rid of them very easily. So yeah, I wasn't expecting Synact to actually be like good at all. I've said that already, but man, Synact was really fucking good. And the reason I put that in play is so that the next turn after, I can buff my troops with Precog. I mean, you might think that's an odd choice. It is, kind of. Don't really need to do that. But I decided to. And it doesn't matter anyway because he had flank. Unfortunate. Doesn't matter though. Because I have healing. Yeah, I decided to go face. Because the troop, it, yeah, this troop is more useful in play. Because he has to use two energy to get rid of it without taking that damage. And he can't afford to take damage. But I love this card too. Very powerful and it can heal itself. Basically impossible to get rid of. Thousand Suns are like really fucking good with their board removals. I'm not gonna lie. I think they have better board removals than pretty much any other faction. I mean, on par with World Eaters, obviously, because of how cheap World Eaters board removals can get from just brain dead attacking. But still. Thousand Suns are my favourite Legion and Lore, too. I just fucking love Sorcerers. I think it's really fucking cool. I mean, the way Warhammer does it. In most fantasy settings, sorcerers are kind of like, um, very weak. But because they're space marines, they don't have that same weakness. They're very strong physically and they can use magic. But yeah, I just, um, I just showed you that you can heal it so it can never be taken out of play. And it's very useful that way. Because even now he has to use his ability and that's an entire turn. But yeah, magic is cool. Magic in Warhammer is really cool. I never liked magic before Warhammer. But Warhammer made me really like it. I decided not to attack because I'm very low. And next turn I'll have enough psychic energy to deal 6 damage anyway. From my warlord alone. Doesn't matter though because he can't clear the board. The first game was actually kind of close. Doesn't really matter though. Because I still win. You have to expect to have low health as Synact because you're going to be attacking a lot. So it's normal. And I have another Gabriel Sun target. I will show you my two losses as well. It's very annoying because the way I lost in those two games was like infuriating. But I'll show you just so you know what it looks like to lose with this deck. This was lucky. City of Light and your, like, your starting hand is always really good. Especially with Synact because of your ability, obviously. And Synact is just so good at board control. They can never keep troops in play. 
you just get rid of them immediately. And even that troop I'm just going to get rid of. He probably should have used this counter attack to be honest. Actually I would have just used Anctel. But yeah, Space Marine Sorcerers in any Legion is awesome. Doesn't matter if it's not a Thousand Suns, but I love a Thousand Suns because they're all about that. That was a very lucky top deck. Saved me from taking damage. Yeah, I'd say Flesh Change isn't useful with any other Thousand Suns Warlord. Me personally, I think that you don't need him on a you don't need the card on Araman. But with Synax, you need at least one because it's very useful with his ability. So at least have one Flesh Change. Plus the fact that it draws a card as well. You can attack with a troop and then use Flesh Change. So it is a pretty good card. Yeah, Ironman's Cabal is just amazing. For six energy, I don't think there's really like cards that are as good as it. I mean, troops like in any other legion, as good as um, Araman's Cabal. Yeah, I don't really, I really like, um, I forgot what he was called, that card. But against Santar, it's just useless. And there's so many Santars that's not really worth putting your de in your deck anymore. I mean, I do anyway, just in case I'm not against Santa, but it's kind of annoying. Or Mortarian. I still hate Mortarian as a Warlord. Poison stacking is so annoying. Yeah, and Ang Tower is just a very good card all round. Because it goes back into your deck if you have no troops in play too. So you, like, you need two of them. Because four damage for four energy is actually like decent. But I can just use uh, two leg here. Better Laz Rifle section, which is just what that card is. I'm glad the Cars and Sons had it. Decided to save one of the Cabals, just in case he puts in play like a big card that I need protection against. Yeah, just because a Thousand Sons cards are cheap don't doesn't mean like you want to spam them. Especially in this meta, when you have like um, that Iron Hands card, um, Cannonade, I think it's called, deal free damage to free targets, because they're all free health, and you don't want your entire board being wiped. But yeah, that card came in handy, the one I got from um, my um, tactic dealer, whatever the fuck he, that guy's called. So I was pretty confident at that point in the rank ladder because I'd already won two in a row. But next game is a loss, unfortunately, against Ferris Manus. I was doing very well in this game, I think, up until the very end where like some, it, it was kind of bullshit to be honest.
There was nothing I, I could do against it either, but you'll see. Today we forge a path to victory. I want people to tell me what their favourite characters in lore are. And I'll rate them in the comments. Because I love the Warhammer books. Horus Heresy the most. I'm not gonna lie, current 40k, like the story going on at the moment, I think it's really boring. I don't read the new books, I don't really care about the Primarchs coming back either. Because I just know what's going to happen, like, the Lawless Primarchs are obviously just always going to win, so it's not that interesting. I don't know, I just think the Horus Heresy is so much better than 40k. I mean, in the Horus Heresy, you didn't know what was going to happen next, like, characters were being killed off every book. No one had plot armor. just the way I like you. It's also why I hate Star Wars now. Simply because of plot armor. I mean, The Old Republic's great, but any other Star Wars movie, I just think it's kind of bad. I mean, just very average. But yeah, I'm very glad I always have board removal for this card, because it's so annoying. And free energy as well. It's insane. If they put the Survivor Augment on that card, it's basically impossible to get rid of without board removal. So you've just got to be careful. Yeah, I choose not to attack with this card next turn because I want to keep it in play. And did anyone hear about that new movie? The Creator, it's called? Yeah, it's called The Creator. It's by the same guys that made um, Andor. But was it Andor or was it Rogue One? It was one of the Star Wars movies or shows. But basically, don't watch it. It's very average. Just wait for it to come out on DVD. Don't waste your time. I watched it, like, just now. And it was pretty, like, it was just bad. Really. I say average to be generous, but I found it really boring. The best movie that's ever, like, released recently is Top Gun Maverick. Like, there's no other movie that I've really had fun watching other than Maverick that was just a fucking perfect movie. Tom Cruise is like the best actor ever, I swear. I'm not even joking. Okay, this, this is the card that completely fucked me over. I hate this card so much. Because yeah, it always goes face as well. Like, it doesn't matter that it attacks by itself, it just always goes face. I hate it. It's not even 10 energy, it's 9 energy as well. It's fucking insane because it can attack by itself. So annoying. And do you, do you want to know what's worse than one of those cards? Fucking two of them. Like, how unlucky is that? That, like, I was probably going to win this game and it was just taken from me. From this bullshit. Just two of these cards. Wow. Like, there's nothing you can do in that situation. Like, there was nothing I could do to stop that from happening. Just very unlucky, I had two of those. Okay, the next game after that, I went to Araman and I won. But I'm not going to show that because I'm doing a video on Snacks. I might show it at the end if I have time. But Mortarian next. I was very surprised I won against Mortarian. Mortarian is one of the warlords I'm very scared of. Probably the most I fear in like the reworked factions, just because of his ability. Just the amount of health he has, 
and his ability because poison stacking is so annoying and there's a reason i didn't attack there it's because of how much damage mortarian can deal man honestly mortarian is basically an aggro warlord that doesn't even need to attack with the amount of damage poison stacking is so annoying like there's not really any other way that this mechanic can work without it stacking but still i hate it and the old poison was really bad so they needed to change it but just like infinite stacking that's so annoying At first, like, I was thinking them, like, should be a limit to, like, how much poison you could stack. Like, maybe five or something. Five damage. But I'm not sure. Tell me what you think about poison. Do you like it or do you think it should be changed? It is kind of fucking powerful, to be honest. But nothing you can really do. And this is why flesh change is so useful. You can attack, use flesh change, then use ash and blow. Or your ability. It's great. So at least have one of them, like I said before. I got lucky with Mortarian not using his ability a lot. Because I had a lot of low cost troops. And that meant that he had to obviously counterplay. And he couldn't use his ability. That's why this card is very useful, because this card works very well with the speeder. I have at least one of these because of that. It's a very good combo. I hate life leech as well. It's really annoying. Like the amount they can heal from just using a two energy card with like no like gimmicks at all. It's just instant. There's nothing, um, there's no downsides to life leech. Just two energy, heal loads. And deal one damage to everything. It should at least be free energy, I think. Let me check the description for that card. Deal one damage to all enemies. Heal one to your warlord plus one for each enemy damage this way. Okay. So it's basically just like, heal loads. There is no downside at all. Yeah, like I said. Maybe it should be only that um, you heal when you um, hit damaged enemies. Not just enemies. I don't know. But it is a very good card. At least free energy. Two is too cheap. Yeah, and there was nothing he could do here. I've practically already won. And I started going on the offensive here because I could afford to. had enough psychic energy yeah he quit because he knew but i had enough psychic energy to finish him with my ability this is the second loss i had out of i think 10 games and the last one i didn't lose after this but this was very annoying as well i mean i'm against sisters of silence already which is a hard counter I, am a like, I don't know why the developers made them a hard counter to a thousand sons. I know Sisters of Silence are blanks, but like Lord doesn't need to pass into gameplay. Considering how incredibly good Sisters of Silence are as a faction already, they don't need to hard counter a thousand sons. Because that just makes it even more unfair on a thousand sons, because like this faction isn't even meta. Sisters of Silence are and have been meta a lot. 
and they've just got so many powerful cards. Like, especially the Great Tyfe. Like, that's fucking overpowered. Very good troops. Their mission is very easy. Just loads of things about Sisters of Science is great. Especially the amount of board removal they have. Like, sacrifice a troop, destroy a damaged troop, stuff like that. Very annoying faction. And they hard counter, like, a thousand suns too, on top of that. You'd have a hard time beating them with a normal faction, let alone a thousand suns. But whatever. Yeah, at the start I thought I was doing very well, but I still end up losing this, which is annoying. It was this fucking card that lost me the game, I remember now. If you see this, get rid of it instantly. I should have used Ash and Blow on it right here. Yeah, what I was doing was I was keeping this in place so that I could attack him and destroy that with Cleave, but I should have just used Ash and Blow. Because he can just deny me. With like these annoying abilities. And it was this that fucked me at the end. I remember. I should have just destroyed it instantly. That's why you need to get rid of this card like immediately. Because like the first time they use his ability, they can get a really good tactic. Just like pure luck. They could get something that completely like changes the game. You just gotta be careful. Yep, yeah. boom. Five damage on Psycho Troops because it's a hard counter. And that means me as well. I don't I do not know why like it's on the wall or two. It's just insane. If it was troops only, then fair enough, but Warlord 2? Like and a thousand sons warlord can't not have Psycho. So it's just kind of unfair. You're always just going to take loads of damage. Yeah, I had the right idea there, getting rid of it. But it was too late at that point. Because he got really lucky first try. And he got even luckier drawing the seal that he picked. Oh. It was unfortunate that I wasn't getting any troops. Because if I got Hidden One or um, Aram and Cabal again, then I could have probably won. I was very close to finishing him. I don't think I should have done that. I should have just used Flesh Change and then used my ability to destroy him. Like, I don't think I would have been able to do it in a single turn. But he would have been too low. Yeah, I made a mistake there, I think. I could have killed him. Oh, never mind. I couldn't have because he used Car Attack. Alright. Yeah, nothing I could have done then. Fortunate. I got lucky there. Yeah, and I had to clear the board so my shield would stay in. Because I didn't want to take damage. But it didn't matter because he drew a seal from there.
literally what won him the game. And this is an exploit, by the way. Sisters of Silence players put this in their deck because it's an exploit. I'll tell you about it, but basically, it abuses a mechanic. Yeah, do you see how it's rally put in play one displaced civilian? But the thing is about this card is every displaced civilian has this rally effect. So when Sisters of Silence activate their mission, which is use rally multiple times, it will just be like an infinite loop of putting in play civilians. So they can put in play one of these, get a full board of civilians, and then use Great Tithe to deal tons of damage. And it's not an intended game mechanic. It's an exploit. It's just the developers haven't been bothered to patch it. And it's still a thing in the game to my knowledge. I mean, why would she be using it if it wasn't? So yeah, it's just very annoying that the developers don't give a shit. Because they would have fixed it if they did. There's no way they don't know about it. I mean, other people have complained about it. But next game anyway, that was the last loss, so it's just a winning streak from here. Against an Araman too, which is kind of scary because of precog obviously. This. So, you have needed me. Can't get rid of troops on the board if they have precognition. So he kind of countered me here. Lucky with that. But yeah, I want to be going face because of Araman's mission. I can't let him get that because he'll just win then. I love the A Thousand Suns mission because it's a decent mission. It's not overpowered and it's got like a hard victory condition. Like it's actually ta like challenging. It's just a very like well balanced mission altogether. Because your opponent can get rid of troops that generate psychic power, making it very hard to complete the mission. And once you get the mission, it's just like extra psyker on your warlord and a psychic power every turn. And it can be any psychic power. So like it's very well balanced. Just random psychic powers. You might not even like find it useful. And that's why it's good. Because you know, Thousand Sons is all about RNG. Synact's less so. But Araman and like Magnus especially. It's very like about luck. It's why Thousand Sons aren't very meta. Because it's too much based on luck. But the way I beat this guy is actually really fucking cool. And like it just reinforces like my statement that you need to get rid of this troop instantly. Because look at this. Auric Mortalis. And you know what I'm about to do. <laughs> look at this. Fucking beautiful. God that's so satisfying. All of his precog troops gone. Just because I got that lucky on the tactic draw. Yeah, at this point, like, he's lost. I mean, he can clear the board, but he's too low on health, really. And he had nothing to put in play to. Yeah, he's finished. Very unlucky that he didn't have like any troops to put in play the turn before. To be honest, if I was him, I would have put this one in play the turn before. Just to like have something on the board. Even if it's a flank troop, doesn't matter if you don't use it. I did the maths here, that's exactly like 9 damage. Pretty sure. I'm 
He quit anyway. So next game. Gabriel Santar again. So many people play this warlord. And what's annoying is that Fosis Car is completely useless because of Gabriel Santar. His ability do like being deal one damage twice means that he can deal he can just destroy a thousand ton shields basically. Like the psychic barriers are useless. Because it's a uh, one one front line with a shield. So he deals one damage to the shield and one damage to the front line. And it's just gone. So it's very annoying. Like just Fosis car is completely useless now as a warlord because of how many people play Santa. Oh. And Magnus is useless as well because his demon, well it's not a demon prince, it's his um, soul shattered form, whatever it is, his awakened state. It's so hard to get to. I know it's taking damage, but it's like, it's just impossible because of how much that card costs to turn into. And the fact that it's only minus one every time you take damage. Angron's demon prince form is so much easier to get magnus is just impossible but yeah already i have a very strong board and i've got aramin's cabal twice coming Yeah, and I can just heal it back to full health. I decided to try my luck with that because I didn't want to take damage to my Warlord. Like, four damage is quite a lot. Wasn't feeling it. And I just decide to go face because like he's done at this point way too low to win yep and deal one damage with that too just have so many troops in play that you can't possibly get rid of all of them see what I mean that's what Santa can do so Fosis Car is useless now as a warlord. Trust me, I played a game as Fosis against Santa. You can't win. Like defensive play styles as a thousand suns are basically ruined. It wouldn't be a problem if like Santa wasn't a very popular warlord, but he is. So, and I liked Fosis too. It's annoying. Next game, I have loads of games to show off because I was having loads of fun playing Santa. The next is a Horus game and it's a friendly game because I couldn't find any ranked. I mean, honestly, I'll just show it. If you want to skip it, I'll have timestamps, so that's fine. I think this was a pretty fun game. Horus is still like pretty scary because his ability is amazing. Yeah, it's incredibly good. I think it's kind of overpowered, to be honest. Like a Chaos Mark and one one. I feel like his normal ability should be give a Chaos Mark, and his um, Ascension ability should be the one one two. I don't know. It just feels a bit unbalanced to have it in his normal state. Because his awakened ability, his ascension, is give chaos mark to all troops. I think it would be better if it was give a chaos mark and 1-1 one, one to all troops. And just remove 1-1 one, one from his normal ability. It'd be more balanced that way. And his ascension would be a lot better. 
because honestly, give a Chaos Mike to all troops isn't that good. Like, compared to Angron. Or Mortarion, which is give poison to all enemies, which is amazing. I don't know. Not many people complain. I don't complain about Horus. He is kind of like alright. He's definitely not as unbalanced as the other warlords. Plus his artwork is really cool. And his voice lines are awesome. I love good voice lines. Oh yeah, his ability is really good with that card. Decided to use my ability to just get rid of it. I could afford to spend all of my psychic power. And I wanted to save my counter attack. Can't really use my counter attack because he would have turned it into a greater demon next turn. With Synact, I rarely use Hidden One's ability. I just attack with it. You want to be dealing damage with Synact anyway. And he lost. Yeah, you want to be really careful when going against the Synax. My advice is don't let him get troops on the board. Because as well as dealing damage with his troops, he could have Angtau, he could have Astral Warfare, and he could have his like... He could have two Lex, he could use his ability. Like, he just has like, loads of damage in his hands on his Warlord. And if he has damage on the board too, then you're going to be taking tons. Like, it's... Just make sure he doesn't get board control. Alright, this guy next. Almost done. I just had a lot of games to show off. And this is the new guy. I am a scholar. So now you can know how to beat the new one. Tag matter formation ready with updated engagement protocols. With Synax it's really easy because even though he puts in play free threes, you can just get rid of them with the ability. Get rid of it like that. Easy. Yeah, that's an act you can afford to take damage when destroying troops, usually. I mean, if you have this card in your hand, then you can definitely afford to take damage. But, like, you're going to be dealing so much damage as Synact anyway that it doesn't matter if you take damage too. Unless, of course, you're against Angron, then it definitely matters how much damage you take.
Yeah, sorry, I'm not talking. Just not much to say at the moment in terms of commentary. He isn't doing much. Honestly, like, giving Sanact a turn without doing anything is bad. I mean, you should always, like, be trying to get board control over Sanact so he wastes his psychic power and he can't put, like, troops in play. Because the more troops you put in play, the more damage Sanact is going to take. And then it means he's going to be using his ability so much he can't use Ash and Blow. And he's dead. Exactly 9 damage. It's so satisfying when you do it exactly. I love like how long it takes to kill someone because your opponent is just staring at their screen realizing that they're fucked but they have to wait such a long time to lose. I remember back in the old days I made like um, a sheet of paper because I couldn't be bothered to do the maps in my head. I had a sheet of paper with like all of Sinak's damage at like the exact psychic power as well so like i think it was like 32 psychic power equals 15 damage and i had it all on a sheet and then it meant like when i was playing games i'd look at my sheets see how much psychic power i had and know how much damage i'll do exactly and like i was ending people at like half health it was crazy but it was really fun This Sinak deck is less about psychic power and more about board control because I've got a lot of powerful of troops. I am the next step of the Mechanicum. But yeah, she's really annoying. I hate this Warlord, but this Warlord really isn't that intimidating when you're playing a Sinak. Honestly, Sinak is a pretty good counter to most of the things that you go against now on the ladder. I'm not sure how good he is on high terror, but he is very good now at uh, where I'm at. And that was very lucky. Getting City of Light. Also, tell me what your favourite Primarchs are and why. I'll rate that too. As well as your favourite characters and lore. Non-Primarch favourite characters and favourite Primarchs. I'd love to hear it. Mine are um, Conrad and Perturabo. I fucking love them because their character writing is so good. And their Primarch books are amazing too. But tell me about yours. I'd love to know. And I love characters like, um, obviously, Araman is my favorite character in all of Warhammer. That's why I have him as my picture. But other than that, I really like characters like Sevatar, Argotel, um, Khan, Lucius. There's just so many good characters in 40k. Well, the Horus Heresy. 40k doesn't have as many cool characters, but in the Horus Heresy, like, all the best characters are there. And they're not dead, which is even better. Cetesius is also a really cool character. He's Thousand Sons, but, like, basically no one knows about him. He's not in this game, and he's, like, only in the books. But he has, like, the capacity, he has the ability to summon hundreds of demons. It's, like, his specialty as a sorcerer. 
he's spent thousands of years basically like learning the names of tons of demons and he can summon entire armies onto the battlefield as well as greater demons it's just kind of overpowered like depending on the situation he's even more powerful than araman just because of the fact that he can summon armies and they and they're all completely loyal to him as well because he knows their real names it's just so cool i love Cetesius. Great personality as well. Yeah, and this guy's finished. This troop has been very useful. I love this troop. was a good idea to use this. This guy is very good. I think that was all of the games. Yeah, I did a lot of games this time, mainly because I was having a lot of fun, but I only lost twice and I won tons of games. So it was a very good win rate as Sanact. He did a lot better, like as I said, he did much better than I thought he would. So I'm glad I made a video on him now. Like I didn't think he would be this good. But he is still a very good warlord. Here's the deck again. Orbital bombardment was basically useless. I didn't use it. I used it once, but I lost that game anyway. So you don't really need that card. The reason I have it is because I said at the start you could use it with Astral Warfare and it'd be awesome. But maybe um, burning a bot would be better because you could really clear a board combined with Astral Warfare that way. But other than that, all of these cards are pretty well. You might want to put them in. Ash and Blow twice, definitely. I think you only need Astral Warfare once. This card, of course. These cards twice. That twice. This at least once because of Angron. This at least once because like the card stealing ability is good when you like really need it. And obviously precog and a decent amount of damage. Healing, you definitely need it as an aggro warlord like Sanak because he's taking a lot of damage. Max Squad, I've got one. You don't need it, but you can put it in. Angtau twice, definitely. This for Psyche twice. Um, I have this twice just so I can defend myself against Aggro Warlords. But you can use a different card. Actually, no. Use this card. You definitely need it against Angron. So use that for sure. This twice, definitely. At least one of these. You don't need two of either of these, I think. I think one each is fine. Void Engagement. I use this, but you could use one of the other one energy draws like Arbus Lighter. I use Void Engagement for damage. Kaizu Lane is just a very good card and Flesh Change once, and that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Like, it was a very good suggestion to do Synact. So, um, I forgot the, guy, the guy's username exactly, but thank you for telling me to do this one because he was actually very fun. I'll credit you in the description but i could do araman next time because even though he's a thousand sons as well he's a very different play style and he's um he's the mission and i love playing araman with mission as well he's very fun so i could do a video on that uh thank you for watching i hope you tune in for the next one <laughs> tune in uh I'm never not going to say tune in or water like like because even though people make fun of it for being British, I don't care. I've said it all my life and I'm not going to stop saying it. Uh, again, if you want me to do a deck, I will do it. I have a lot that I could do and I take suggestions. So just tell me whatever you want to see and I'll do it. Thanks for watching and see you.